Hi, Nathaniel, just over here. Um, last time, obviously, we got to speak to you at the media day back in March, and then, of course, you didn't get to fight. So what's it like second time around? Are you nervous that, uh, you know, the same thing will happen again? How are you feeling going into this weekend? Uh, touch wood. I don't want to jinx it. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, not worried that nothing, if anything's going to happen. You know, obviously, Charles Rose is a game opponent. He's been around for a very long time. I can't imagine anything that's going to go wrong now. Um, so, yeah, it's, I'm good to, it's good to be here, and I can't wait to, uh, to get it on Saturday night. And what was that like for you, obviously, you know, doing the whole run-up, obviously fight camp, media day, everything, and then to have that fight taken away from you, you know, how did that affect you? I won't lie, it was heartbreaking. Um, obviously, I put a lot of time and effort into that camp and felt amazing. And obviously, I'd already been out for a very long time anyway, so for the fight to get pulled, like, you know, the day before the weigh-ins, um, yeah, it did It did suck. Uh but it's only made me more motivated now. You know, I got to experience, obviously, fight week and all the aggression that I've held maybe in that last one. You know, I get to release it on Saturday night. So uh, I'd hate to be Charles right now. And then, you know, how, how, when did you find out, you know, from, from March, when did you next uh, get your opponent? When, how, how long was that time in between? Um, oh, what was it? Probably a month after I was hearing rumours that they're coming back. So obviously straight away I said to my manager, that's it, you know, I've got to be on, obviously, that London card. I'd like to think Dana's coming back just for me. Um, but, yeah, you know, it was about a month after, I think, and then waiting to get matched. You know, there was uh, a couple of pullouts we've had. I won't mention names. Um, but Obviously, I went up a weight category to 145, so I think it was a little bit of a struggle for the UFC to find someone for me. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm glad Charles Rose has uh, accepted the fight. Uh, and like you said, yeah, you've got Charles Rose. What, what do you think of him as an opponent? He's a very good opponent, very game, perfect for, to welcome me in the 145 division. Uh, I think he's had about 12 fights in the UFC now. Wins and losses, you know, hasn't really gone on a complete tear. Um, but my coach and teammates, they've, they've trained with him um, back in ATT. So I've got a good insight as to what to expect. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, watching his fights myself, you can see that he's a game opponent and... You know, he comes to fight, so hopefully Saturday night he does that and we can, um, you know, put on a show for the crowd. Nathaniel, um, besides the extra £10, what's going what, what's gonna to be the big difference in, uh, in Nathaniel Wood on fight night at featherweight compared to what we've seen already at bantamweight? I think the speed difference, you know, because obviously coming up a weight, I have put on some muscle, I have put on some size, and I'm feeling a lot more powerful and strong. Maybe not as quick as I would be at bantamweight, but I've still got that speed. So, you know, I don't think the 145ers are going to be quicker than I am. And I'm still going to be walking in there pretty heavy. You know, I think most people think I'm walking in at 145. I'm not. I still have a lot of weight to cut. Um, but compared to normal, you know, it's a lot easier. And obviously you wanted to fight in March and, it, you know, it didn't happen. But has that extra time been of additional benefit to you in terms of getting yourself ready for a debut at 45? I think mindset-wise, it's just made me even more hungry. You know, you take something away from someone for... It's almost been two years now. Um, you know, I'm eager. I'm very, very hungry. So, uh, yeah, you know, I think that's definitely helped my mindset. And, you know, I don't need any more motivation than I do. Right now, to, to go in there Saturday, you know, it's... Uh, I've been waiting two years, man. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it is weird, especially when all I know is fighting. You know, that's my job. I don't do anything else. So being on the sidelines for so long... Um, it's tough, but we're here now, and hopefully, you know, the injuries, etc. That's just a, a distant memory. And I think probably geographically, you live closer to the O2 than any other fighter on this card. So, how much would it mean for you to walk out there in front of friends, family, local Londoners, get that win, get back in the win column, and just get back in the mix again? How much would that mean to you? It, it means everything to me. Um, obviously, there's a lot of extra added pressure because I am the only London fighter on the roster. And I wasn't on that last one, um, but I rise to the pressure. You know, I like it. So, uh, yeah, the benefit is I can sleep in my own bed at night. You know, I don't have to stay at the hotel because I'm literally around the corner. And, yeah, you know, that crowd, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be electric. Brilliant. Last one from me. Uh, you're one of a number of former Cage Warriors champions who are on this card. Just how much of a, a good grounding has that been and, and preparation for you? To, in terms of your UFC career and, and 
how much of a benefit that has been for you? Obviously, being the Cage Warriors champ was always a, a big achievement of mine. You know, technically, I was a world champion, um, which was always my goal. It wasn't UFC, but, you know, it was uh, that stepping stone. And Cage Warriors is a great promotion, and they're kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, they're feeding, you know, the guys to get to the UFC. So it was great to be a part of that promotion, and obviously to have the, the run that I did on it, um, you know, was obviously good, and it's uh, done, I guess, more for my profile when I got signed by the UFC. And it'd be nice to get your face slapped by Brad Pickett before you get in the cage on Saturday. Yeah, I think he's eager to do it. You know, I think he's been waiting a very long time, so I think he's going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, I don't really look forward to it too much, but yeah, it'll be good to be back. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Nathaniel, what have you made of Charles Rose's uh, past performances, especially his last two? So from watching his performances myself, I don't really rate him. You know, I don't, you know, it's not me being cocky or anything like that. I just, you know, I don't really see much there is on his fights to worry me. Obviously, my coaches know him. I know that he's a very game opponent and I know he's a very skillful opponent. I'm not looking past him whatsoever. But yeah, if you said to me, right, judge that guy from what you can see on his fights, I don't really see anything that's going to affect me. So, um... As long as I turn up with my A game, don't make any mistakes, you know, I think it's going to be an easy night in the office for me. How do you see it playing out on Saturday? I believe I'm going to get a TKO win in the second round. I think I'm going to be too fast for him and I'm going to have too much power in my hands. So we will see. But, um, yeah, I'm predicting a second round TKO win. Nathaniel, just down to the right here. I believe, um, you know, not to jinx anything like you say, going back to the March event, it was actually like the day of the media day that you got the news. Do you remember where you exactly were when you were told? And obviously, I think they were actually looking for a short notice replacement, but they couldn't find one. So do you remember kind of your first reaction to being told that you weren't going to fight? I think my first reaction was straight away, what can I get to eat? Because I was <laughs> cutting weight, you know, I was in a, a bit of a state. And it's hard to think and function when you're cutting a lot of weight. You know, you've had no carbs in your system, you've been water loading. And this was on the Thursday, it got cancelled, I believe. Um, so, yeah, it was a weird feeling because straight away, you know, it was like, OK, at least we know now what's going on because it had been very up in the air that them last couple of days. So it was a bit... Bit of a relief to get an actual answer, right? Your fight's off. Um, because until then, you know, it was, oh, what's going on? Am I fighting this guy? Am I fighting that guy? Is someone going to sign it? Um, but yeah, as soon as I got that bit of food in me and I actually was able to uh, think clearly, I was gutted, man. You know, it was heartbreaking. But um, yeah, it is what it is. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, I believe. I think I saw a picture of you some fans at Cage Warriors like on the Friday mm -hmm. and then, you know, that was such a good card and the London was such a good card. Was it almost just like a bit gutting to be watching from the sidelines but now you're here, you're like, you know, thank God I get to do it again. Yeah, it was. It was really gutting and obviously at the time I thought, right, the UFC aren't going to be coming back to London for a very long time. Obviously I wasn't to know that they're coming back a few months later. So as soon as I kind of heard that, you know, it was a little bit of a relief because, you know, obviously in 2019 I made my UFC... Um, London debut and it was probably the best experience of my life so to have that kind of taken away and think you know it's going to be a while again till, till we can do it again um, it, that sucked so yeah as soon as I heard they were coming back in July you know that was a good feeling and um, yeah I, I'm, I'm looking forward to mm. it and finally from me obviously you know you got roasted this weekend it's a featherweight fight and bantamweight is your home I'm interested obviously because you're not fought in almost two years now uh, one person who's actually looking for his retirement fight is Frankie Edgar. He wants a MSG uh, in um, November. Have you ever, you obviously, everyone knows Frankie. You kind of fight that you'd want, but obviously you want to get this one out of the way first. And what are your thoughts on Frankie? And obviously him calling the quits, and I'm guessing you'd want that fight. Is he fighting at 145? I believe it might be bound weight. I'm not sure on the weight class, okay. but obviously. Now yeah, that you're yeah. kind of jumbling between the two, I guess either weight for you would be ideal, no? Yeah, I think where I've been out for so long, where my body's been able to grow, I don't know if I would even make 135, really. You know, um, it's, it's, getting, it's getting tough. And especially now that I've gone up a weight class, I've been able to actually feed my muscles and, and grow as an athlete. But Frankie Edgar, what a legend, man. You know, if I could fight him at 135, hell yeah, you know, 100%. If I could make the 135. Um, but yeah, if he decides that he wanted to go up 145, I'm not a big featherweight. So, you know, that would be amazing. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Nathaniel, just wanted to ask, just here, mate. Just wanted to ask, what's the mental side of things like when you suffer that many setbacks and 
a huge period of inactivity. How do you deal with that as a fighter? I know we spoke to Paul Craig before he said it's a very lonely place. Would you echo that? Yeah, it's it's tough. You know, luckily where the majority of my injuries have been on my hand, I've still been able to train. You know, it wasn't like an ACL tear where you can't even go for a jog. You know, I was still able to work around it. I had a cast on my hand, but I was still able to go and kick, jabs, use elbows, etc. Um, so luckily that's kept me sane because otherwise I don't know what I would do. And it's a lonely place when, you know, when you, when you train full time for a living and you, if your friends work normal jobs, you know, your missus works a normal job, it can be very lonely just sitting at home all day. But I did go and get myself a dog. I got a Belgian shepherd. So, uh, he keeps me busy, keeps me sane and, um, yeah, gives me plenty to do. And do you sympathise with what Darren Till's going through at the moment as well? He says he's going through his Tyson Fury stage, similar to what you've been going through inactivity-wise and niggling injuries. I mean, do you sympathise with that and do you hate to see a fighter go through that? Yeah, 100%. You know, at the end of the day, we it's not just a paycheck to us. This is what we love to do. You know, we, we're all probably, I think, the majority of fighters that are on this, this journey to, you know, build a legacy. And these in, these injuries are only putting us out for even longer. So... That's another reason why I've gone up a weight, you know, there's less injuries, I'm being able to recover properly, you know, rehydrate properly, and the idea is to live a l- nice, long, happy life, and do what I love for a living, so, um, yeah, you know, I do I do feel for Darren, um, I know he would have been, loved to have been on this card, and, you know, I just hope, obviously, that he recovers well. Oh, yeah, um, you mentioned Brad Pickett earlier, and um, <laughs> I think one of the greatest entrances was when he came out to Chaz and Dave, you get uh, Going to pick anything from their back catalogue for yours? No, I'm sticking to the same the same song that I always have. Um, it's kind of like my signature one, so uh, it'll be nice to hear that playing again and get to walk out and hopefully repeat what I did in 2019. Excellent. Cheers. Cool. Is that everything? Yep. Cheers, guys. <laughs>